Okay, so we're now starting on the little blind that matches the rest of our window treatment. We've got this beautiful fabric, which is a linen fabric. Um, it's quite expensive, really sweet. It's perfect for a little nursery. <laughs> Now I'm doing this one interlined and black outlined because I want it to be nice and thick and warm for the baby and also to keep any um, light outs, hence why it's going to be black outlined. So I've gone along the edge, made sure that all the lining is butted right up to the edge and I've turned over this piece so that I can cut this piece away because the interlining is only going to be the size of the blind. We're not having any extra tucked in anywhere. It's just going to literally be the size of the blind and it's all just going to be locked in before I even start the black outlining. So I'm just going along and cutting away any bits I don't need. Okay, so now the lining uh, interlining is all um, nicely into the blind I'm going to take out the outside edges so the first measurement that I've got to do is well I've got three measurements I've got 18.7 51.1 and 80.6. I'm going to start with the middle one because then I can come back and do the um, the bottom one and then I can go around the other side and do the top one. So you will start in the middle because obviously you can't, once you've done the bottom one, you can't get to the middle. <laughs> so we always have to start with the middle. So um, I'm going to turn up the lining and measure 51.1. Now I'm going to turn up the bottom bit just to reveal the finished drop because obviously we've got to do the 51, got to do the 51.1 from the bottom. So that's where it needs to be. So now that that's in place, I know that when I pull this towards me, it's not going to move. So I'm going to pull it towards me so that I can reach it and then make sure everything is still in place, like all these sides are all like in line with each other and i'm now going to lock this piece in here now usually when it's normal lining and i'm obviously locking it in it will be i'll do 10 in the middle and 10 with interlining i'm going to do i'm going to start at the end 10 10 10 i'm just going to go all the way along so that i i know that my interlining is nicely locked in but it's always got you've always got to make sure that wherever your rings are going, you're nicely um, locked in because it's going to pull on this part of the blind, you know, where the rings are and where, where the um, side white, the, you know, the winder barrels go. It's going to pull up this part. And if it's not locked in properly, it might come, it might sort of come undone. So. But you want this to be nice and secure. So now I've cast it off on the end. I'm doing like three stitches. And then one for luck. Make it extra strong. And then cut that piece off with these massive scissors. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, guys. I I use my little scissors for things like that. But I can't see them anywhere. They've done a runner. Okay, I'm going around the other end to pull it back the other end so we can do the first channel. So I'm now going to pull the interlining back to the first rod pocket, which is 18.7. So let's put our 18.7 in from the bottom here. 18.7 is there. So let's bring the lining down to the top of the tape measure. 
And the good thing about these tape measures is that, you know, obviously there's no extra piece on the end. So you just come down to that bit and it makes your work much easier when you've got tools that are good like this. So, um, and a little bit up there. Oh, it's dropped a little bit there. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to do exactly the same thing that we just did. But obviously I've got to put some more cotton on my needle. So, here we go, sorry. Can you see how much I'm picking up, guys? It's only a very small amount. You don't want to see any stitch lines on the other side of the blind. Okay, and now we're going to cast off three little stitches into the interlining. It's quite tricky to sew interlining. It's like... It's got a mind of its own and then going into there that knots you off and then still don't know where my little scissors are take that one out okay now i'm going to go around to the other side of the blind and do the other one making sure this is nice and straight right that can go these can go back in Oh no, they can't. I've got to do the other side. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, let's move you here so that we can you can see what's going on there. Where's my cotton? <laughs> Behind the camera. Okay, let's turn you around. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the interline back on itself. Take away any little bits. Get my tape measure. Now I know this is 113, so I'm just going to go and get the final drop is 80.6, so I'm going to fold that over and then pull that at the bottom. Okay, from the bottom it's 80.6. Okay, I've got the um, blackout lining laid on. Um, this is uh, what we're lining it in. It's this lovely, quite a thick blackout lining. Um, it's got a nice silky side to it, and that's the inside. Um, I'm bringing the lining right. So this is the hem. You can see, check. You can see, and then I'm bringing the lining right down to the bottom of the fabric, and then I'm going to cut it so that we've got about. Because we've got three rod pockets in this blind, we use three centimetres uh, allowance for each rod pocket. So I'm going to take it past the drop and then add another 12 centimetres on just so that there's a little bit extra at the top. So I'm just going to go and cut that now. The next thing I'm going to do now is fold in two centimetres allowance at the side. I'm just going to try and position so that two that's three <laughs> let's say two and a half let's say two and a half guys although this is quite a good blackout lining it it doesn't crease very well so I'm not sure whether I'm even going to bother pressing this actually. I'm just going to pin it and then I'll move the pins as I go. So just go along making sure you're taking away two centimetres. Now I'm using the straight edge of this lining because I did cut it on the other side. So I'm using the straight edge to get my two, cent two and a half centimetres first and then I will then measure from this end to the other end to get my finished width, which is going to be two centimetres less 
than the finished width of the blind. And that's because I like to bring my black outlined blinds sort of to as far to the edge as I possibly can because obviously where you don't have the black outlining you're not going to have it black out so I don't want to have too much of a gap at the side where you, you're not black out. Right so that's all pinned in now I'm going to get my ruler my steel ruler and I'm gonna measure from the, the straight edge that I've already done and then tuck in what I don't need make it so that it's the right width so because the blind is 67 I'm going to make this 65 so that we've got a centimeter each side turning in so let's put a pin in there Now, once this is done, I will obviously trim it back because I won't want it this big because that will interfere with the five glass rods. OK. I just go all the way up and make sure it's a 65 so that we're nice and straight. So I'll pull this towards me and just carry on doing 65 and it seems to just be staying at 65 as I go up which is good. I'm having a day of hurting myself with pins and the iron today so I'm a bit wounded. <laughs> Do you ever get that guys? Must admit, I, I do love this work though. I mean, I'm always very relaxed and laid back and sometimes I put my music on or listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video or something. Uh, I like true crime as well. I don't know whether any of you like to watch true crime. Yes, yeah, so I was talking earlier about my, um, my the idea of a Patreon um, group, which I'd like to set up which will enable people to, for a small fee, um, it will enable people to have sort of benefits of sort of percentage off. I mean, I was thinking 10% off tracks, poles, fabrics, linings, and that kind of thing. And other sort of things where maybe you can have a, a chat with me once a month if you want to know anything or that kind of thing. So yeah, if anyone has any thoughts on that, do let me know, because I'd be very interested to hear what your thoughts are on that idea. Okay, so that I didn't bother ironing that because it didn't work the last time, so I'm not gonna bother, it's no point. So I'm just gonna trim this away so that it's two and a half centimetres like the other side. Okay, now I'm going to do the rod pockets. Now we've already discussed the rod pocket sizes. First of all, we want to bring the lining to the bottom and pin where we've got to start. So bottom is there so basically you know we want to sort of make sure we've got the same amount of lining that we're going to tuck into the hem if you can see there guys so that's where the pin is and that's where the lining is so it's exactly the same amount that we've got in the hem so we've got to make sure we've got that there and then start our rod pockets from that line. I'm gonna put these pins in perpendicular because I don't wanna go stabbing myself like I did earlier. Right, so if we stick a couple of pins in here to hold this in place, so that when we put that in the bottom, it will be 
they'll be nice and straight and they'll be the same amount all the way along right so that that is where we start our rod pockets this this line here so where i so this line here is where we start the rod pocket so we tuck over or fold over rather um our 18 18.7 so let's get our small ruler let's take this out see some of these should be put in perpendicular because they if i put my hand on any of them and they're not perpendicular they're going to go right into my fingers right so 18.7 i'm going to put a very very small pen mark that pencil mark 18.7 is there so it's there 18.7 then i do one in the middle from the edge of this lining here and then one on the end and then we get the long ruler and we match the marks together and very gently mark our lining okay then i'll take that pin out there because it's right where i want to sew <laughs> and bring this back so that it's a centimeter and a half and then i'm going to pop the pin into the actual pencil mark like that you have to get it dead on that's it like that and then do do quite a few of them about about five do one in the middle very end we will then we'll sew that but we'll mark them all first so the next one we do well first of all I'm just going to put these perpendicular it's my favorite word that is by the way <laughs> I use it so often don't I okay let's just put those crossways the next one is going to be 51.1 so let's move this up so we've got 51.1 from this piece here we put it right at the bottom And the 51.1, oops, careful you don't move it, Sandy. 51.1 is here. Just stick a little mark in there. And then 51.1 in the middle. Make sure you put your pins where you're going to do your markings because you need to sort of press the fabric out so you've got it nice and taut so, so if you were doing one here make sure you've got the pin mark in the in the way you know a pin in the way so that you get it nice and taut now that is not looking like it's straight okay well it is now didn't at first but now it is Okay, now we pull these down so that they're an inch, uh, sorry, a centimetre and a half. Take that one out now, we don't need that one in there. And put the pin along the pencil mark. Now you won't see these pencil marks because it will be tucked up into the rod pocket. You just won't see them. So... 
next one along about 10 centimeters i'd say Get a couple more pins make sure that's together these bits are really important guys because you know this is the structure of the blind so if this isn't correct then the blind isn't going to look right so it's very important that you get these measurements really accurate okay so now we're going to do the final one right, i may have to go around the other side so put it towards you don't take out that one because i'm about to stab myself with it okay pull the pit pull it out so that it's stretched okay let's go around the other side and So the last one is going to be 80.6. So let's get to the end. Okay, I will have to go around the other side just to check we're on the end of the lining. 80.6 is here. And then let's do that one. And then join them together again. And then bring that towards you. Make sure you've got no pins underneath to stab you. Okay. You can take any pins out now that you can see holding the lining because once you've got these pinned in, you probably won't, they probably won't come undone. The lining will stay where it is, especially with blackout lining because it's very stiff and it sort of goes where you want it to go. It's quite good. It's hard to sew it's quite thick and hard on the old fingers so you might need a thimble if you can wear a thimble but i don't wear one because i just haven't got used to it and i think you're one of these people that either does wear a thimble and can wear a thimble and then others that just can't get on with them and i'm one of those ones i'm afraid so now i'm going to sew my channels my rod pockets and then I'll be ready to lock it into the blind, the rod pockets. It's catching this. What have I done? Okay, so I'm ready to sew those together. So let's go to the machine and do that. Okay, so we are now doing our first rod pocket. So we go forward a bit, back, and then forward. Make sure we've got the needle over our pencil mark. That's our first one and we're going to do all the others but I won't film those because you know how they're done. Okay so I'm facing up the um, the lining now onto the actual blind. I'm making sure I've allowed a centimetre each side so that it's nice and straight and I'm going to use quite a nice thick cotton in on this bit because um, it's going into the interlining and order, uh, going into the um, blackout lining and I want to make sure it's nice and strong. Now we only go into the blackout lining a very tiny bit because we don't want to um, create any holes because 
obviously, you know, I don't know whether you've ever seen a blackout lining where someone has done stab stitching and then you've got all these holes everywhere and it looks awful. So I'm going to start by just going in 10 centimetres. I'm not going to start at the very end because the, the amount, I don't want to put too many stitches in this. So now because the interlining is all fixed onto the actual face fabric, we don't need to go all the way through to the face fabric. Now we're only going into the interlining, which is already locked in nicely anyway. So um, we start by going into the interlining first with our a knot we've got a little knot on the end well we haven't actually because i haven't done it yet okay right we have now then we go in again and again and we're not going through to the main part of the fabric you know we're only going into the interlining literally let's see if i can do it one-handedly no that's too much Okay, that'll do. So I'm only going that much into the lining and I'm doing it on the bottom bit, not this top bit. I'm doing it into this bit so that when the rod pockets um, go up in their folds, you don't see this. It will be hidden by the, the pocket here. Very clever. Yes, I know. Okay, so let's carry on. So we only go in that much, just the interlining. Okay, so I've done that twice. Then go to the middle of the blind. I haven't pinned here because I can just eyeball that that's the middle. And I'm again, again only going in a very tiny amount there. And then I'm going to the interlining. Three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to this one. Now it's a bit difficult with you there, so let me move you a bit. Okay, take your pin out. Now I've got a little hole where the pin was, so I'm just going to literally pick up a weeny bit there. If I can try and... that's it. It was stuck in a bit, so just a weeny bit like that. Into the interlining. Once. Twice. Three. I might go again. One more. And then I'm going to go back into the lining and go through the cord like that. And that makes like a little cast off. So that's nice and strong. Okay. And then we're going to cut that. That's our first one done. So I'm now going to pull this down and do the next one. Okay, I just want to show you how to... Um, so I've, I've locked in this one. I've locked in this one. So I'm going to pin in between each rod pocket where I've locked it so that this isn't going to move. Not that it will move because it's locked in, but... I just want to make sure it's nice and stable because this is obviously where we're going to do our hand sewing. Okay, so we've done the bottom one. Um, I'm going to pin this in a minute, but I'm going to move this forward because I want to show you how to do the bottom. So I've done I've done the locking in at the bottom, so now we can turn all this up and get this the right size and everything so obviously you can see that the interlining is down to the um, bottom of the blind where the crease line is that's the crease line for the lining of where the bottom is and then I'm going to fold over it all the just the two layers because obviously the interlining only goes down to there but I'm going to fold these two layers up to where the bottom is, where the crease line is at the bottom of the blind, so you can see here, along here, and I'm going to do that all the way along, make sure it's all straight and in place, then I'm going to fold it back, then I'm going to fold the bottom up to the crease, the crease line I've just made, 
all the way along. Finger press that. I haven't put my iron on yet. So I'm just gonna, and then fold that back up so that all that blind, all the lining is tucked up into that hem. Okay, so let's put the pins in there, make sure that's all. So we will obviously sew across there and then leave one open for the bottom bar to be put into. I'm just gonna put a pin at the bottom here as well. So that's done and it will, all it needs now is hand sewing. So everything is at hand sewing stage now, apart from the last rod pocket, which I'll go around. Okay, with. now we've had our coffee and it was delicious. Right, so we've got our finished drop um, and I've obviously um, given it a good press and pinned the top down for now. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. I've taken the blackout lining up to here. Now I usually cut it here, but um, with blackout lining, I kind of like to tuck it in so that the Velcro will sit on it and it will give a nice stability at the top. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've just tucked it in. It's only coming over a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll tuck the, um, the top over like this. So I'll bring it back on itself. Up. So I'll bring it back, take it to the crease so that we've got a half kind of like a kind of hem, but at the top sort of thing. I'm going to take it almost to the crease, not right on the crease or so it won't sit right just take it nearly to the crease and then give this a press but on in this case i don't need to press it because it's it's um it's linen so it will press brilliantly on its own so just finger press it so what i'll do then is i'll pull that back and then i'll pin this in place now i've got my little bit of um uh cotton from before where I stopped sewing at the top there. So I've left that there so I can close these up in a minute because those those will both get closed up because obviously this is the top, not like where it's the bottom, but I mean, you don't close both of them, but you, you do at the top, obviously. <laughs> so I've pinned this one. Now I'm going to go at the end and pin the other side and then just put a couple more pins in, making sure the pattern stays nice and straight. Right, so I've got my female Velcro and I'm going to position it so that it's obviously right on the end but I'm going to make sure it's about like that. So the Roman line track is designed so that the um, male velcro doesn't start on, until about sort of half a centimetre down so we have to sort of marry them up together so that's why I do it like that so put the work under your press of it and line it up first put the press of it down make sure it's nice and straight and come forward a little bit stop go back okay and then come forward Now, I haven't pinned this in, but you can pin it in. And this is quite a small blind as well, so it shouldn't come undone. <laughs> shouldn't. <laughs> so I shall just carry on. Stop. making sure you've got the same amount seen at the top. Get to the 
the end, stop it just before, and then go back and then cut. And now we're going to trim the Velcro. And just go slightly in because I don't want to catch the and then give that a snip because that's your leftover from your thing and then that's where you're at so now we're going to go along and do the piece at the bottom and then this bit we're going to slip stitch and then we're going to close this bit here and then back and then cut okay so we are now going to put the rods in now I've cut some rods for this job already so they these already fit so we pull down push down the little pocket to get a little circle <laughs> so we can get our little fiberglass rods in give them a twist if you can't get them in sometimes that helps but they should go in quite easily um, and then you can close them that end is already closed so we then have to just put a few stitches in here and that will close that off so now we're going to move the blind down and put the next one in again push it down make the little hole twist the fiberglass rod and then Pull that, in, push that in, and then that's that one done. And then the final one. And again, press down, twist, and then pull that one in. Push, push that one in. So the final thing to do, the final one is your. Now make sure that you go into the lining piece, which is where you. Um, so you're going into this sort of like gap where you've got your lining in the middle. Let's try and show you. So you're going in there. So if you have a look what I'm doing. So I'm going in to the lining piece. And now that just needs closing up with this piece of um, cotton. Okay, so let's close all the little channels up and then we'll put the rings on, show you how to do that. Make sure you tuck that piece in there. Got it all tucked in nicely. I'm just gonna try and, that's it, flatten that a bit. Oh, my needle's come under. And then just go over the very corner with a couple of little stitches. Take them really small so we don't want to see anything. So I'm just going to knot my cotton, take the needle into sort of near the top but in the inside of the channel. Make sure the knot is right in there. It's very difficult to get to this angle because I'm I can't get to it because you're in the way. <laughs> okay, actually, let me give that a trim. If I give that a trim, we won't have it all hanging out, will we? There we go. Right, now that's oh. So take the knot right inside, 
bring it to the edge. And then just do a couple of stitches the side, just a few little tiny ones. And then another one down here. It's just to stop the fiberglass rods from coming out. Because you don't want that happening. You'll have the client calling you and saying, Oh, my bride is falling apart. <laughs> okay, let's just give that a snip. That is done. Now we're going to put the rings on. Okay, so we're now going to do the rings. So what we do is we're going to measure our 10 centimeters from the end. Make sure it lined up with our locking in stitches. So we go up, we go to 10 from the end of the blind to 10, which is where we did our locking in stitches. I mean, you can see also that, I'll show you. We've got our little mark there where we did our locking in stitch. So we sort of know where we're going anyway, but. So I'm gonna go in. I'm not putting any knots in, this is double thread. I'm going to hold on to the thread and then just cast on, maybe do about two stitches, fairly tight. Then I'm just going to trim away the excess tail that we made. And then I'm going to get a ring using these. You can um, order these from me if you need some. Um, I do them in packs of 50. So you can put them, you put your ring against the rod pocket like this, and then you're going to do three stitches into the ring. One, two, three. And then you're going to get your ring and lift it up like this. Then you're going to circle around the ring three times. And then you're going to do three times through again. So that is how you do your ring. And we've got another five to do. Right, so we've got the track on. Um, it's obviously on Velcro. I haven't put the end on yet, so, but basically I put the track on and then I've turned it over. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna line the rings up with the top cartridges. These are like the little barrels where the cord comes from. They're like spools. And there's two of them in this blind because we've only got two lots of rings, so. So basically we've got to line this spool up with this ring and then once we've got it lined up we click that in place so it's quite easy so that's not going to move anywhere now and what we now do is we're going to thread our spool cord through the rings so obviously there's that one and I have to move it so you can see what I'm doing. And then we've got this one. So we've done this one here, and now we're gonna do the last one. So once we've done that one, we've got, obviously we've got the bottom here, but there's nothing at the bottom. This is the last ring. So I'm now gonna thread the cord through our little orbs, our clip orbs, that's what I call them, but I don't know whether you've got a name for them, but that's what I call them. <laughs> so basically, we're going to squeeze them, feed the cord through them, and then obviously pull the cord through so that it's just literally sitting on the cord like that. Don't pull it too tight or whatever. And then I'm just gonna trim this just here. Let's move you forward so you can see what I've done. Whoops, I nearly dropped you then. 
so yeah just thread it through there that's sitting there that's cut there and then i'm going to do the other one so i will show you what it looks like okay so here is our lovely blind pull it down so you can see it working so notice there's no stitch marks anywhere and then just keep going it's a continuous chain and then it just goes up might need a little bit of because it's interlined sometimes it does need a little bit of training it's just quite puffy you know <laughs> but it's really beautiful <laughs> there we go bye for now guys bye